We are here today in Queensland, Nova Scotia with a good friend of mine, uh, Bunk. He's a local artist, very talented guy. I've known Bunk for 25 years plus. Um, he's uh, going to take us through his studio today and show us the process that uh, he goes through to make pottery. Correct me, that's... There we'll work. be doing the strawberry on a plate. Strawberry on a plate. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Bunk is going to give us a little tour through his studio here, show what product he, he has. All right, these are from a, a series of uh, tiles that I did. It's a uh, lot of daisies and sunflowers. So a couple, of these are three that are left. Fairly difficult. These are my three probably most complex pieces. A lot to them, this one being totally hand-built, this is before I, I cast. These are from a, a mold I have of a sand and tile that I've made, and you can get very elaborate here. These are glazed with the scales on it, different crystal backgrounds, but the scaling, very tough, very fine work, steady hand. Each little line, which is three different shades of color, has to be done twice. So it's probably art that in 10 years time I won't be able to do. These I've just recently done, it's the same mold, but I kept it simple, just offsetting patterns, colors. These are kind of mates. This is my run of sunflowers, actual sunflowers I picked from a field in Mountain Valley, cast them. Here I run into the boxes of berries I made. Strawberries, blueberries, raspberries. This is some optical illusions. Here is the, the death mask of my daughter from age one to 10. Some different fruit bowls, again, vases of flowers. These are cast. And here, we'll jump to it, are my molds. My molds are my masters made in plaster. And here you can assemble them and make different arrangements. This is a box with braided clay, with lid. Very tough to put a crown on top of braid without it collapsing. So that was a, a real process. The molds in here with my kiln. We'll load that up a little later. This is electric reduction kiln. Fairly small. You'd be able to put a piece in about that size, or with shelves, multiple shelves, and many small pieces. Uh, I have here, maybe you won't get a good look right now, we'll pull them out later. This is my inventory of glazes. And when we do our strawberries, we'll be wanting red and probably a white. It's, it's, it's liquid glass, so it goes on kind of like a paint, a thick paint with brush, but it's liquid glass. So to illustrate the process that Bunk goes through to make his pottery, we're going to make an example of berries on a plate. And here's a little, I'm going to zoom in here, very intricate artwork that he's done here. And we're just going to, Bunk is just going to basically take us through what the process would be to make something like this. Alright, here is what the finished product looks like. I've left it white because it contrasts nicely with the red berries, white on the bottom. And basically that's just not glazing it because it fires white and it's a clear glaze over top. And for a little extra color I trimmed it on the outside with red. But the thing is solid and that's the, the important part is that those berries are stuck to that. Alright, here is the cast made of the actual strawberries. Hand picked in the field down the valley. Cut in half. So there's a mate, top and bottom to each one. And we're going to pour slip into the, the hollows of, of this mold and join them together and piece the berries, place them on the plate. All right, the liquid slip is going to be poured into here. If you want to do it slow, take a turkey baster, drive the arrow, plunge it in, release it. I guess it's capillary action that will bring it up the baster. And we fill up the bottom half of that particular berry. Overflow the rim because it will 
dry off a bit here. And you have to clean your turkey baster every time. So a couple little shots in water, suck up water, squirt it out, keep it clean, plunge it back into the slip jar. Now you want to do the top. This is the, the meat. We'll make a couple berries here. It will be at least 10 to 15 minutes for these to set to the stage where we're going to get rid of the unwanted clay and we'll leave them hollow. So there, this will be clean your turkey baster, dry it off, reseal the slip, and then we can start with making, rolling out the plate while these set. Bunk is now going to show us the process he would go through to make the plate that the berries sit on. Alright, here's the remnants of this bag of clay. It's low white earthenware. It fires to a, a white but dries as a light gray. We only have two berries poured, so we're going to do a small plate. Now you could have a mechanical process for this, but with a roller, it's, it's kind of like making pie. The trick is you have to get it uniform, and you have to do it without touching the clay as much as possible. Because when you touch the clay, you're going to leave a little indent that will never come out. But we'll take it slowly. The Newspaper is the right trick because it absorbs a bit of the water as you're rolling on it. I suppose if my table was canvas covered, other artists do that as well. It's just a matter of not letting the paper get too wet. Because every time you roll the clay a bit, you're pushing some water into the paper. Now the thickness, this is just an artistic decision, but the quick test is to skim off a piece on the right hand side, again don't touch the clay, use your knife, pull it away, and have a look at the thickness now, a little too thick for my liking, so we're going to keep, keep rolling. And you go in different directions and you keep flipping the clay, it's just so that uniformly that clay gets pressed and compressed. Now I can tell by feel that this is getting to the thickness that I like. One more test. I like that. Now a ruler is necessary unless you're really good and you can do a quick cut. It's always recommended, a guy who worked a lot in paper told me this, that you always, always cut and you always cut away from you and you always cut on your comfortable side. So you turn your piece, you turn your paper, the whole bit, don't try to go against your natural comfort way to cut. So turn your piece. We're going to do a probably a square and we can just keep cutting it down and down until and if you're not perfectly straight and you won't be because as clay dries the water that comes out of the grit you're left behind with little pebbly structure anyway. So your really smoothing effect is achieved by a paintbrush at the end. So as long as you, you want to get it straight and square and the whole bit, but there's always touch up at the end. So you don't fret about it now at this stage. 
Yep, I'm liking that. Again, it's a two-berry plate, so you just have to make your artistic decision to how how busy you want that plate to be. I'm thinking I'm getting down to the size I want. We'll worry about doing something fancy with the corners after we get the berries on and we'll have the, the most important clay lesson then on how to slip and score your pieces together. So right now we've got our nice flat tile plate, whatever you want to call it, and we'll just let that set up. Alright, we are back to our strawberry molds and we don't want all the clay in there, the berry would be solid. And you'd run the risk of air inside and probably not drying totally and likely losing it in your fire. So you bring your trusty turkey baster to back, suck up what clay isn't required, bring it back over to your jar, squirt it back in. So it's left these with a maybe a quarter inch wall. If it's too thin, well the berries aren't very structurally sound. If it's too thick, well then you run that same risk of them being nearly solid and not really drying. And they'd be too heavy. Especially if you made a box of berries or a whole plate. So we're getting rid of probably half the weight. And they will have to sit in that state and, and firm up for probably another five to ten minutes. Alright, we are now ready to pull these berries. And you, for each mold, you kind of have to hand craft out of clay your own pulling device, which would be shaped according to what you've cast. In this case, the strawberry is this cylinder type shape. You wet your remover. Not too wet, not too dry. It's a experiencing. So it's got to be wet enough to be tacky but not so wet that it's going to join with the, the slip and pull the wall right off. So you drive it in and slowly pull the wall towards the center so that it releases from the plaster and there you've left with your perfectly molded berry, you pull out your remover and let that sit and you want the mate to it. So again you have to wet your little piece of clay the right consistency, it's getting there, now it's ready. The top isn't as big so it pulls a little quicker. There's your mate for that. It's quite important at this stage where it's, it's still setting that you don't touch it. Because if you touch it, your fingerprint's going to go on it and it's going to mask the, the detail of the, the original berry. So, minimum touching of your, your piece. Once it hardens, you're, you're able to play with it a bit more when it's hard. But right now, we've got to be a little more careful. So this one's going to be... A little more work around and around. Strawberries pull very easy. The other extreme would be for me my cast of a sunflower. You're watching this come out in five seconds. A person would tediously work for perhaps a half an hour to pull a sunflower. Alright so you still got another little piece of clay that can be used. Again save it and we're going to join those berries. Alright we are now ready to pull these berries. And you, for each mold, you kind of have to hand craft out of clay your own pulling device, which would be shaped according to what you've cast. In this case, the strawberry is this cylinder type shape. You wet your remover. Not too wet, not too dry. It's an experience thing. So it's got to be wet enough to be tacky but not so wet that it's going to join with the, the slip and pull the wall right off. So you drive it in and slowly pull the wall towards the center 
so that it releases from the plaster and there you've left with your perfectly molded berry. You pull out your remover and let that sit and you want the mate to it. So again you have to wet your little piece of clay the right consistency. It's getting there. Now it's ready. The top isn't as big so it pulls a little quicker. There's your mate for that. It's quite important at this stage where it's, it's still setting that you don't touch it. Because if you touch it your fingerprint's going to go on it and it's going to mask the, the detail of the, the original berry. So minimum touching of your, your piece. Once it hardens you're, you're able to play with it a bit more when it's hard, but right now we've got to be a little more careful. So this one's going to be a little more work, around and around. Strawberries pull very easy. The other extreme would be, for me, my cast of a sunflower. You're watching this come out in five seconds. A person would tediously work for perhaps a half an hour to pull a sunflower. All right, so you still got another little piece of clay that can be used. Again, save it. And we're going to join those berries. Here are the two berries we're going to join. And although this is a small surface area where they're going to join, it's still important to get a slip and score achieved. It would be mo most important when we put the berries onto the plate, but even at this level, we want to slip and score. The slip word is the liquid clay. So I'm going to just, this is still so much slip that just water will bring it right back. Other times you, you were joining two bigger objects, you'd almost want to put clay between them. But this is so, so wet already. Of course you're going to see the crease line, but as long as you only touch it right there for now, we can clean that up. You can plug it with other slip, you can clean it with your tools. And now, for the second one, you can even bring up the slip that's in the hollows of this. Works alright. I'm not going to score it. Scoring it would be actually taking a sharp tool and, and making it rough. But for the strawberry, we can just join it with the two slip as opposed to the score because it's going to join. There, now your two berries are set to dry. Alright, stage now is to put the berries on your plate. And we're going to put the whole piece of art on a drywall board because the drywall will help pull the water out of your plate uniformly too. So you lay your plate in the middle, take your two berries and before you even put them down where you want them to go, you lay them out where you might want them to go. Stand back and look, you know, you want it on the side, upside down, the whole bit. So for, for me, one on the side, one upside down. Take note of where you want them, because you're going to actually slip and score these ones. Where they touch the tile, we're going to score it. With a sharp tool, that means cutting right into it. I'll probably even get my exacto knife. And you put your hash cuts against each other, so you create a, a grid. And same thing to where your beer is going to go. It, it touches here. I'm going to probably score that a little bit. This one's going to go on its side. Which side's a good side? Both about the same. It'll be way around here. So that's my score. The slipping score with the berries, there's still enough slip in the liquid state. Here we're more of a solid state. So your slip comes from actual clay. 
So it's going to act as like a glue. So it's important that you use the clay, but you've got to get that at the right consistency. You can't have it too dry or it's not going to join the two pieces. So you have to wet your plate, keep this clay really wet, get that on there. That's the one. So then you come back at that again with your sharp tool, slip and score the, the clay itself. You want this into a real milky type texture. It wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of clay on, on the piece that you're going to join. What I'm going to do is just pick some up from that. Get this nice and wet, this really wet, and again, a little soppy, put that on there, try not to touch the berry, and just to clean it up a little bit at this stage, you can run your paintbrush with water on it, so that berry will sit, you will still have a window to play with it and move it around and address it but not too much time and the next one again really wet wet I'll pull up some of that clay put it on there Alright, nice and goopy, a little more water, put that on, alright, now what we have done to this nice, clean, pretty plate is we've added clay to it, and what is happening is those Two pieces of clay are going to pull apart from each other as they dry. And these berries will pull on that tile and will warp it. It's just going to, it's a physical state of the drying process. So you got to kind of stay with it. If you just walked away from this and you came back later, you might be disappointed by, by how much this has caused the plate to, to, to move. If you want to if you notice on our finished product, the tips were curled up. That, that's addressed by taking four little pieces of paper of all the same size and folding it into a square. Again, you try not to touch that plate because you don't want to compress that clay. It's not so much about getting your fingerprint on it. That can be wiped off. But any dent is not going to pop out. This is just for effect. Now you could make this really curved up. You could have it as a flat plate. It's your artistic moment for, for what you like. Now the cleaning up of the part where it was joined together is achieved by either taking some slip, which we'll try one little demo of using slip, and just letting the slip fill into here, and that fills that seam up. You can also take actual clay, wet it down to basically the same consistency as the slip that was just used there. We'll do this one on further down, let's say. This way of using real clay fills it up better, but takes a little longer to clean it up. The slip will just pour right into the, the crack, and you can walk away. 
Once that dries a little bit, you come back at it with your finishing tools and you can clean up that seam and you would never know that, that there was a, a joint crease going across that. Once your berries are cleaned up to the state that you like, any other little flaws on the plate can be cleaned up with your paintbrush. Nice and wet, one smooth steady stroke, clean up any little bits of water or grit that's sitting there. And again, just like when you cut your clay, wherever your hand gives you the right comfort movement, you turn your piece to work with, with your good hand. One of the secrets with working with clay is as it dries you get different windows to do different things and that's where your experience comes in. This you can maybe I suppose walk away from this right now and not have to touch it up anymore. But of course you know every few hours would be some the clay would be slightly changing. But we are now at the stage to let it sit. At this point you could put your name in it, you can wait and put anything on that way after it's fired and you can glaze your name in or you can carve it right in now. I like to carve it in and I will use a little tool. The very very last thing perhaps is signing off and I'll show you the, a critical element right now. As you know these were hollow and if you don't allow the air to come out while it's being fired then it will probably pop, pop the mold so you have to vent it, you have to put a hole in it so I'd like to put it in some place where it's not really going to be seen so you drive a sharp tool through it and create a little vent hole some place down on the under, underside so, alright so we've got our vent holes and as that dries that will tend to get smaller and smaller so it's very important in a day or two to keep your tool in and out of that hole to make sure that hole is sufficient to let the air out and pick your top and bottom if you want to put your name into it here's the moment I'll put my little signature I like to date it some artists do some don't and this is a piece that we'll let sit all total, probably from the first pour to this state, might have been 20 minutes to half an hour tops. Here's a piece that was made. It's dried. It's the same project. It was a plate of three berries. And this is dried. You can see the different color. This is probably dried for two weeks. And you'd need to dry it for a good few days before you would want to fire it. So this, this will sit, dry for a week or more, and then we'll load it into the kiln for the first bisque firing. All right, here is my electric kiln. And when the pieces are sufficiently dry, and I have enough of them to make it worthwhile, we're gonna load them into this, it's a 220 wired machine where this particular unit is only got one setting for earthenware clay. Uh, it's not programmable, it's fairly old, but it's still functional. This fires at two different degrees. One is your firing the first time, it's called a bisque firing. It will go to what's called cone 04. Our glaze firing comes later, it goes at what's called cone 06. And cone 06 is cooler than cone 04 you know, because it's like a negative part. Uh, if you hear of other clays, like stoneware, it fires higher. Porcelain fires the highest. For the low white earthenware, cone 04, it's about 1700 degrees Celsius. And the bisque firing is about 100 degrees less. We are now back at the kiln. It's cooled down. We're going to lift it and, and pray to the kiln gods that Everything went as hoped. 
And also with that plate, I fired some other things just to make it a more efficient firing. So I have a, a box of strawberries in here as well. And I can see that those, those look fine. We get a plate of berries and here is a sample of a box of berries. And this is called bisque fired. So it's white, it's hardened, it's, it's shrank probably, earthenware shrinks, they say five to 10%. So it's a little smaller than when it went in. And we're gonna now have to glaze it. All right, we're now gonna continue on and glaze not the plate, but I'm going to show you on the box of berries. You get the proper color glaze. This one by Duncan is called cranberry, but it fires to the to a good red of strawberry. This is very similar to painting, but it goes on in different layers. You have to put at least two coats. Many times it's three applications. So the trick is to keep the object steady and keep your, your body steady too. You don't want to work and be all uh, reaching in at places. A box of berries presents some undercuts where you really have to get your brush in, in difficult places. I like to do those first and then you finish off with the easy strokes. So, once your brush is loaded up, you want your piece steady by hand and you reach down in there and you give your piece a little swipe. Pull your brush back out the same way. Once that's dried, you go back in and give it another coat. It's tedious, takes a long time. When you get back to doing your the, the big exposed stuff, which is the easy stuff, I'm going to give a demonstration of a piece right here in the middle. You'd want to do light coats. If you want it to be more realistic in capturing the two colors of the berries, you would come along with yellow on each of those seeds. It'd be near impossible to do it because the seeds are so small, but we're going to do one coat of red. That will be suffice. This will need to dry for probably half an hour before you want to put your second coat on. The second coat will go on a little more flowing. All right, it would just be a matter of bit by bit by bit and in a case of the strawberries, I've learned not to do hauls. I have. It, it's a thin little uh, addition that goes on, makes it look realistic, but they always break. Here is a sample of a box I made before. This one has stayed somewhat intact, but all other ones I've made, they chip and break at the slightest touch. So I've learned it's just not clever to keep doing that. You're looking for trouble. So these boxes I've made, with the hulls being pulled, but the tops of the berries, they are not red. You would have to go and look at a real berry. They're a white with a little tinge of green. So you would do your red right up to that line. Do your two coats. And once your red is done, come back at that with a little bit of green and a little bit of white Two coats, the boxes. You know, it's a there's a an underglaze that I use. These glaze have a gloss that's built into it, it makes it shiny, uh, a little more waterproof, easier to dust, I suppose. But you can also buy a glaze called an underglaze that doesn't have the shiny part to it, and it has its own purposes, and it comes in more of a range of colors. But for my boxes, I would use that underglaze. It looks like the box, and it doesn't have the shine.
So I'm going to show you the finished result once you would do all the berries, all the little tops, all the box and finish up with the little staples. A finished product that I recently done that came out of the kiln it looks like this. So here you've got the little bit of green and the white, the red. You see the ledge in there, how it's built. I mean, you have to be strong on your engineering and to, to make the piece work. But the box, if you'll notice, doesn't have that glossy shine by choice. I think it looks more like a box than the other ones that I've done. So your bisque fired piece goes back into the kiln for the firing at cone 06. This is the end result. Once the it dries a real muted color and with all your glazes you're not seeing the color that it becomes. You just have to learn, especially if you start mixing, so it's a learning process of what your result's going to be. Sometimes you hit it pretty good and you're happy with the results. So that's your box of strawberries finished.